Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Please be seated. Today is the feast day of St. Bibiana, and St. Bibiana is a, a, a great example of uh, uh, endurance in suffering and many things to, to take from her life. There's actually not a ton of things to, to uh, a ton of detail to her life story, but <coughs> the little bit that we do know actually brings us several different important lessons uh, to, to, to come to us. Her parents uh, were nobility in Rome at that time. Her father, Flavius, he was uh, actually a prefect, uh, and an interesting aspect to their life was that it was after those initial persecutions of the church and, and peace had sort of arrived and, and Christianity was, was, had become a stronghold for a while, uh, and then there was this resurgence towards the old ways, the pagan ways. Uh, her father was the prefect who actually exiled Julian, who was a Catholic and then had left the faith he, um, and em embraced paganism all anew. He would later become emperor himself, and we know him today as Julian the Apostate. Not exactly the title you want to be known for, for your life. It's uh, probably many other things you probably could think of that he would rather be known for, but that was unfortunately his strongest character. He was one that totally abandoned the faith and embraced paganism. And as often as the case, and we can see it in our own lifetimes, that when somebody has the true faith and they've uh, chosen to, to turn away from it and they've chosen to abandon that altogether, it is not merely a lukewarmness that they have or an, an apathy towards the faith, but they become embittered and cold towards it and, and oftentimes violently react towards it. Why? Because they have, to, they have to cover up their own conscience, their conscience which fills them with guilt. And so they can't just look upon it as, oh, that's, that's another uh, fine way of doing things, but rather have to justify themselves in, their own, in front of their own guilty conscience as to why they rejected those truths, the things that they inherently know in their soul to be true. Well, Julian was this way. He rejects the faith that he was uh, that he, of his youth, and now he bitterly renews the persecution against the, the Catholics in the empire at that time. Who do you go after immediately? Well, you go after those who had rightfully punished you for your initial apostasy. And so he exiles the parents of Bibiana and sends them off. They, in their time of exile, they die of natural causes in exile. Uh, and Bibiana makes sure to give them proper Christian burial by returning their bodies to their house and actually burying them in their own fa family home. Bibiana, uh, for her sake, and her sister, her younger sister, Demetria, they are allowed to stay in the home, but they are stripped of all their rights, um, and they are reduced to abject poverty in, as such. They have uh, no means to obtain really anything, because all of that is stripped away from them. And we have to understand that this clearly wasn't just a short period, it wasn't like a weekend that they had to suffer through. It was long enough for her parents to die. It was long enough for them to be expected to die in their own home. They was expected that they would essentially starve to death or be so emaciated and weakened by the fact that they had to beg for scraps as they went about their daily lives because they could, had no means of obtaining any money that they, uh, that they suffered long enough under this that uh, it was a, a surprise to the guards of Julian to when they found out that they still were alive and healthy in their own home. And uh, as such, they were brought before the, the emperor, Julian Apostate, and 
um, they were meant to be questioned about their faith, hoping that perhaps that uh, even though they looked healthy, that they had indeed been weakened by all the, the suffering that they had endured in that time. And then we have an interesting reality. Demetria, the younger of the two of them, she professes her faith strongly before the emperor. And as a reward for that, she immediately falls dead right there in the court, right at the feet of the emperor. And uh, she is uh, as, and, and dying as the, with that confession of faith, obviously gains her eternal reward. Bibiana, she too stands strong in the faith, but she remains perfectly well and alive. And it is to her that the lot of a continued suffering and eventual martyrdom is to come. And so Bibiana is uh, uh, taken to away from the emperor. And the first attempts is one of, of uh, you know, kind of an interesting aspect. They bring in this this wicked woman, this woman who's known for her cruelty and for and for devious ways and, and that, and it is her, her job to try to force Bibiana to give up her faith. And uh, and she comes in and she has um, she goes back and forth between mix, mixing different tactics. At first, she tries to promise her all of these these goods and return to her former way of life and her and riches and comforts and things to, to end her suffering that she's been enduring for all of this time if she simply offers sacrifice to the gods. And uh, she, of course, refuses. Then it is followed up by blows in which she, this w wicked woman beats her and tries to, to beat her into uh, a, a renunciation of the faith. Again, to no avail. Then she returns back to sweetness and again, trying to go back and forth between those ways, even offering her things in the way of temptation in order to try to give up her faith. But all the while, Viviana prays and stays strong through these persecutions. Finally, she's, when this wicked woman has no effect on St. Viviana, she's brought back to the, to the courts and she's condemned to torture. And then she is brought out and tied to a pillar and she is beaten with leaden tipped whips and then faces all sorts of various other tortures which she endures for two whole days until finally she gives up the ghost and she dies a martyr's death after two full days of enduring various forms of horrible torture. And so the lessons from that short little bit of biography that we learn are quite a few. First and foremost, it is a that really good reminder to, to see that oftentimes we think of martyrs of the faith we think of them as being heroic because of the fact that they endured torture, and pain, and suffering, and ultimately gave their lives for the, for, the, for the faith. And that is true. That is ultimately what martyrdom is. But we forget what comes oftentimes with that. So many times in the lives of the saints, it's sort of glossed over as a, a, a side mention or even not mentioned at all, but usually there are means of persecutions that lead up ultimately to that giving of their life. And it is a sacrifice of their of their livelihood. It is a sacrifice of their comfort. It's a sacrifice of their even being able to sustain rights or to be able to maintain uh, sustenance for themselves. A willingness to give up all of the earthly goods that they have with no assurance of anything of the future to come, but re really realizing for themselves that there is nothing. Hunger, thirst, suffering, exile, uh, abject poverty, mockery, long-term slavery, whatever it may be, there's nothing there that, is, that supersedes the, the f fidelity to God that must be maintained in one's life. And it's, it's that good reminder to us that, that many times the persecution comes in, in smaller doses, and, but to us it could be those smaller doses might be more difficult to endure than if somebody were to, say, put a gun to our head and tell us to renounce our faith. That choice is an immediate one. That choice is an easier one to make in some ways than it is to truly embrace long-term uh, uh, full suffering of, of the abandonment of one's 
um, uh, ways of life and, and reduced to, to, uh, uh, to a truly pitiable state. Secondarily, we see as well from that the example of just how important Christian burial is. Bibiana risks her own life. She, she travels a great distance and she, uh, and she suffers much to ensure that the, to provide for her faithful parents who die as confessors for the faith that they are provided with that proper Christian burial something that she knows that the pagans would deny to them and she ensures that they are given that proper place in the to, to have that, that Christian burial and to be laid to rest and to res- their bodies to be respected as, uh, as faithful Christians and then the next lesson that we see in that as well is to realize that truly martyrdom is something in which God has ultimate control over as well as to allowing it to happen and then it is something that is only able to be endured by a true supernatural grace that that God's cho- choosing an inspiration for somebody to be to be uh, become a martyr for the faith is something that he looks upon the character of the person and that and he builds upon it with with extraordinary graces and then they may proceed to martyrdom and we see in that that with Bibiana she is the elder her sister Demetria she is very faithful too but she's younger she's more frail she and um, and while her heart is completely earnest in, in loving and supporting God and being faithful to the faith, God knows the, the level of strength to her heart and what she is able to endure. And so her final task is that willingness to stand up to the emperor and pr- pronounce her faith, facing potential sufferings. And with that, God accepts that sacrifice and allows her to just die right on the spot and not have to endure further suffering and torture because of her own uh, personal disposition as as a younger, more frail person. Bibiana, the elder, God knows that she, that she can bear even greater witness than the, what D- Demetria was capable of. And so he allows her to proceed onwards in that way of the bloody martyrdom to bear an even stronger witness of fidelity to God. Both, both extremely heroic in the, their their example but Viviana is the one whom we celebrate in the calendar because of the additional suffering that she endured in the in the, in the more violent way of her death but w- there's little doubt that both attained the same reward for their fidelity but we see in that that uh, that even in those uh, times of uh, complete suffering and complete what seems like a victory for the enemies of Christ Ultimately, the hand of God is still very much involved. Providence still controls and allows only what we are capable of enduring. And it's a good reminder for every suffering that we come across in our life that no matter how hard it can be at times, no matter how, how much seems to be stacked up against us, if we are faithful, if we are, if we are continually working on pr- pr- strengthening our souls with grace, that providence will always guide what comes to us and our Lord will never allow us to suffer more than we can handle with his assistance. But it seems at times he may push us, but it, uh, but it will always be something that will be manageable, something that we will be able to handle, like I said, with his divine assistance. And so God knows each and every one of us individually. He will treat it that as such, and he will know that uh, you know, to how much we are capable of giving of ourselves, and he will allow us to exercise that in our lives. Uh, and to, you know, like I said, even in the eyes of, even in the face of persecution, that those things, those hardships, they will never supersede what we are able to endure if we remain faithful to him. May God bless you, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.